Company member, Andy Paris. Today, for the first time, we actually met someone who knew Matthew Shepard, Trish Steger, owner of a shop in town, referred to him as Matt. Matt used to come into my shop, and that's how I knew him. It was the first time I heard him refer to as Matt instead of Matthew. Did he go by Matt to everyone? Well, on the 2nd of October, I get a phone call about um, 10 after 7. Doc O'Connor. It was Matthew Shepard, and he said, can you pick me up at the corner of 30 grand? So anyhow, I pulled to the corner to see who Matthew Shepard, you know, it's little guy, about 5'2", soaking wet, 97 pounds tops. They said he was 110 in papers, but I wouldn't believe it. They also said he was 5'5 five, five in the papers, but this man, he was, he was really only about 5'2", and maybe 5'1". Well, so anyway, I pulled to the corner, and I'm going to go a step so you can better understand the principle of this man. So I pulled to the corner, and I go, are you Matthew Shepard? And he goes, yeah, I'm Matthew Shepard, but I don't want you to call me Matthew or Mr. Shepard. I don't want you to call me anything. My name is Matt, and I want you to know that I'm gay, and we're going to a gay bar. Now, do you have any problem with that? And I simply said, how are you paying? The fact is, Larry doesn't have any gay bars, and for that matter, neither does Wyoming. So he was paying me to drive him down to Fort Collins, Colorado, about an hour away. Matt was a blunt little shit. You see what I'm saying? He always was, but that's why I liked him, because he was straightforward. Maybe gay, but straightforward. You see what I'm saying? I don't know, you know. How does any one person ever tell about another? You should really talk to my sister Romaine. She was a really close friend of Matthew. We, we never called him Matthew, actually. Most of the time we, we called him Choo Choo, you know, because we would call him Matthew and then we just, we called him Choo Choo. And whenever I think of Matt, I always remember his incredible beaming smile. I mean, he would walk in a room and he'd be like, you know, and he he really knew how to make you feel great. And he was like <laughs> he would like stare people down in the coffee shop because he wanted to uh, sit and talk to me while I worked. And if someone was sitting there, he would just stare at them until they left. And then he would claim his spot. But Matthew definitely had a political side to him. I mean, that was his big interest was was political affairs. And all I ever really saw is TV was CNN and MSNBC, all that stuff. So he's he's really smart on these things like political affairs, but not so smart on things like common sense. So he moves to Larry to go to school. Yeah, Matthew, he was very shy when he first came in. John Peacock, Matthew Shepard's academic advisor. Well, I mean, like, to the point of almost being mousy, I will say he was having some difficulties adjusting, but this was home for him, and he made that quite clear. I mean, whenever this happened, he started to bloom a little bit. He started working on human rights stuff. He would start saying things like, wow, I have opportunities here. I can actually do things in this world, and I can actually be important. I did talk to Matthew about 48 hours before his attack. He, he told me he had joined the gay lesbian group on campus, and he said he was really enjoying it. You know, they were getting ready for Pride and whatnot. He was totally stoked about school. Yeah, he was really excited about it. And in retrospect, I can only say it's in retrospect, of course, I think that's where he's headed towards human rights, which really only, only adds the irony and tragedy of all this.